So the Enel Moto E World Cup of 2020 continues to thrill and excite as another round in Misano, a doubleheader this time, has yielded a fantastic set of results for two riders and some pretty bad ones for a couple of others and has shaken up the championship order. Uh, welcome to this edition of Behind the Race. Michaela, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Us. Thank you. Good morning. I, I don't know what to say about Moto E anymore. It's, you think you know what's going to happen and then bam, it's blown wide open. And, you know, we saw that at the weekend. Dominique Egeter led the championship coming into the to the second race of, of the two and then got taken out in an accident. And now Matteo Ferrari leads the championship. It's, it's, it's tremendous. Yes, that was a weekend full of surprises. Uh, and also this, uh, I think this new, uh, this new rule of the grid positions for, for race two, depending on race one, was pretty interesting and created a lot of uh, changes inside the, um, the, the race grid. Uh, and that helped quite a lot uh, to have a very good show in Misano. But overall, we have to thank our riders <laughs> because it was, it was their duty to make it spectacular. And yes, we had some expected result like the performance of Ferrari but we had of course some unexpected events uh, who made everything very very interesting and who made the standings now pretty different from what we uh, had expected probably before before yeah, the weekend. Indeed Matteo Ferrari now leads the standings by four points from Dominique Egater. that is a reversal from what happened in race one Egater uh, led that championship uh, won, won the race as, as well um, and then in race two he got taken out in an instant with uh, Tommaso Marcon. Marcon had a good race one, was fifth in that race and then it was in the podium positions and just got over ambitious and you know these things happen but Egeter unfortunately has come off the worst uh, in this incident. Yes, uh, and Ferrari can be pretty thankful for, for that to, to Marcon, unfortunately. Uh, but yes, he can now lead the championship and that was absolutely unexpected. I think that compared to, uh, to last week in Misano, Egerter was much more aggressive. He understood that he had to push more to keep his leadership solid. Uh, because Ferrari was really on fire through all the weekend. And we had some other riders like Torres, for example, who was not really a protagonist during the during last week uh, race. But this time he was always there, always on top. He also got his first pole position uh, in Moto E. So there were uh, other riders coming, coming to the top and putting in doubt uh, Egerter leadership. And moreover, of course, he was pretty unlucky because he had no faults at all in that in that crash. Uh, and now we will have a really, really exciting uh, final in Le Mans because the, the gap between the riders at the top is really tied with four points, seven points to get the four points. Um, so it's it will be an amazing final. One rider whose championship is mathematically, I think it's still there, but realistically is, is gone is Eric Granado. You know, he's had a really tough time of it and Mizano had that qualifying error in, in the first weekend and then second weekend he had, you know, he had this crash with Simeon and I think what we saw in that was a little bit of desperation uh, on Granado's part, you know, trying to make up for the missed opportunity in, in the San Marino race and uh, we've seen it a bit too often from, from Granado mistakes this year and it's yeah, and in such a short season you just cannot make them. Yes, uh, we have always talked about it and that's not the first time for, for Granado to make this kind of mistakes. He's a rider that um, fell pretty often even last year, so we probably expected uh, him to be a bit more mature um, and grown up from that point of view this year. But yeah, in fact, probably cannot really keep uh, this pressure. Uh, he has the speed because we could see many times that he has the speed, but he goes on making this kind of mistakes because even this time he put out uh, Simeon from the race uh, with no fault. Um, and it was also, it was only Granado's fault. So I think that he still needs to make that step forward in this growth uh, to be more efficient and to have real concrete results, uh, not only Moto E, but generally in his racing career. 
for sure, this is obviously going to be something he will learn from in next season, hopefully. He can iron out those mistakes. Because like you say, he has the speed. And we saw that at the start of the year in the first Jerez race. He was brilliant. And even in the second one, had it not been for that accident, you know, he would be in a much different position in this championship. But as it stands, Matteo Ferrari is in control now. And he did what he had to do this weekend. He won that race last time out at, at Mizano. A circuit he's very, very good at. Podium in, in the first race and then went on to win the second one. So he's outside of taking maximum points, he's done pretty much what he needed to do this, this weekend. Yes, uh, he did. He was a little bit unlucky during race one, but he could make that battle. The dead battles between uh, Ferrari, Egerter and Torres was really exciting and really close to make mistakes to touch each other. And, and of course, he tried everything. So he went a little bit wider, too wide <laughs> uh, on the last corner and he got penalized so that he could finish. Um, he couldn't finish second, but, but third. Um, but he has won three out of four races in Misano, so I think that's almost the maximum he could do, and that was enough to to lead the championship. Now I think that he also didn't expect such a success um, after these uh, these races in uh, in Misano. So it's uh, it's a question mark what uh, what will happen in Le Mans because last year the series could not could not be there. Um, so I think it's something completely new for everyone. For sure, the riders they know the track. Uh, uh, but we could see also that with this motorbike, it's pretty uh, special to drive everywhere and you really need to adapt. So maybe a track that you think you know very well, then you do it with another motorbike or another car and it feels completely different. So um, we, we saw that with Matteo Ferrari, he, we expected him to be very, very quick uh, in Misano, but sometimes in other track, he couldn't be that quick and that efficient through all the weekend from qualifying uh, to, to the races. So um, it will be interesting to see if this motivation will be kept also in Le Mans uh, and will be an additional value uh, to him to stay there on top and be consistent as he was in, uh, in Misano. It's a very good point you make there about Le Mans being a new circuit for everyone and, and Moto E anyway. I know a lot of riders there have experience of the circuit and it's going to be very different conditions as well because we're going to Le Mans in October instead of May when we should be. So it's going to be very, very cold yet, you have to think. Um, and this the track layout as well, very stop start, some really hard braking zones. We've seen that, that that is where the Moto E bike tends to be a little bit in difficulty if a rider is too aggressive as we saw with Granado uh, in, in that second race, in that first race with Simeon. So that's another thing to think about as well, is that the track layout is going to be quite difficult for these bikes. It will be very difficult because the weight of the bikes is the most critical point um, of the vehicle. So, uh, and it's the most difficult part for the riders to, to manage uh, because you cannot ask too much to these motorbikes when you arrive at the breaking point you cannot ask too much speed inside the corner and it's really delicate and it's very easy to make mistakes so if i have to make a prediction uh the the rider that i have seen um driving this motorbike the best is for sure Egerter so far it could be very consistent and and always there podium positions or victories or always up and qualifying um so i think that there uh, Ferrari will have another problem with <laughs> with the Gerter again, but yeah, we have seen so far that with Moto E you cannot really <laughs> predict anything anything precise. Uh, but yes, conditions will be tricky, uh, and this yeah a good a good show is announced again. I think. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I'm sure Egerter will be happy to leave Misano because it's not really been a happy place for him. He had a win there yeah. in Moto Two that got stripped from him for technical reasons, and now his championship lead is gone. But Looking ahead to this Le Mans doubleheader, what are your predictions? Because Ferrari's looking strong, but Egater, like you say, does look to be the overall best package. You know, a guy like Matteo Cassidy, he's not out of this championship fight either. So it's where do you see this championship going? Well, I think that we have some, let's say, sure points. Egerter, Ferrari. Um, Torres is now back after him being a little bit lost in the first part of the season. Um, we had some outsiders like uh, Simeon coming uh, coming up 
uh, which was not there before. Um, I don't know. It's really it's really difficult to to predict. As I as I said, I I can imagine Egerter being on top again. Um, I can imagine Ferrari being there to fight because you can see the championship now pretty clear. So I think he will fight a lot. Uh, for that and Casadei, as you said, he was a little bit unlucky also for the qualifying issue, which uh, makes you lose the, the focus when you have a problem and then you have to restart and and to find the focus again for your EPO lap. So I think he was really good in, uh, in managing that situation. He was really good in fighting also with Torres uh, in race two. So I think that I would like to see another Italian there on top again in Le Mans. Uh, and let's see, I mean, every every race we could see someone coming. So difficult to, to, to know and to say who will be the one coming in Le Mans. Yeah, I, I think it's too hard to predict. I, if I was going to put my money anywhere, I think I agree with you that Egeta, maybe. But <laughs> Easy choice, yes. <laughs> let, let, let's wait and see. And that's brilliant about well, motorcycle racing in general this year. It's been so unpredictable, but we will be back next weekend. In fact, not next weekend, in a couple of weekends' time. Getting a little bit ahead of myself there. Very excited about this. We'll be back in a few weeks' time to discuss what should be a pretty dramatic finale. But until then, it is a very warm goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you.